All right, hello, we're back. So today we're gonna dive deeper into linked lists. And before we get dive headfirst into the code, um, I wanted to give the raison d'etre, you know, or in English it would be the reason for being, why do we use linked lists? So obviously we've learned vectors previously, right? And a vector contains data in a contiguous uh, structure in memory. Now, vectors are really good for random access because each element has an index associated with it. And so we can access anything in the list. Uh, no, and that's, it's really great at that. On the other hand, a linked list, okay, well, that's a little different because now if you want to, you can't just access any element because none of these things have indices. In addition, if you want to, you know, get to the third one, right here, let's say, well, you have to kind of hop through the ones that came before it before you can get to this one. So it's definitely not random access like a list is. Well, why use this thing at all? In, you know, like why use a, a linked list at all? So some of the advantages of a linked list is, you know, if this vector was really big, maybe not that big, but if it was really big and you you say, okay, well, you know what? I, I want to insert uh, something right there. So everything that comes below that point has to be moved down. It has to be shifted, okay? Same type of situation. What if you say, I want to delete this one? Well, everything below it has to be shifted up. So in a linked list, if you want to insert something here, it's really easy. You just erase this arrow, create a new linked list, have this guy now point to here, and have this guy point to here. And now you've inserted. It's so easy. It's just, you know, making two assignments, and boom, you can insert something into a linked list. Also, if you you know, similarly, if you wanted to, let's say, delete this guy here, it's really easy. All you do is you would just reassign this pointer to point to the next one, right? And then just simply free this memory. Well, um, the order would matter. But essentially, it's deleting elements in the data structure or you know inserting things is very cheap so there are advantages and there are disadvantages vectors are really good at certain things but linked lists can be uh, really good for other things so it is a useful um, a memory structure however Part of the reason, and I'll be honest with you guys, part of the reason why we're learning linked lists is because it is wonderful at teaching and learning how pointers and recursion work. Because if you think about it, uh, the, the, the beautiful thing about a struct in this case, you know, that we have some some data okay so we have our our we have our may make a bigger one here so we have our data and then we have our pointer here that points to something else well this pointer points to the same type of object that this is so the the definition of a struct where we have a node pointer in the struct it's, almost, it's, a, it's like recursive 
um, to its core because all the functions that we're going to write, now we don't have to code recursively, but this is really a fantastic way of learning how recursion can be so simple, elegant, and efficient at what we're doing. Um, also, you know, C, C++ are not defined to be um, functional programming languages, let's say like Lisp or Scheme, but, um, but you still can learn the stuff that we're going to learn through linked lists. So let's dive into it and um, hopefully this will make some sense. And I'll try to do a really good thorough job of teaching this. Okay, so in teaching this, what I wanted to discuss here is that I actually have multiple solutions of the same type of uh, same function. So the first time I coded this, in order to create a new node, I created this function called new node that returns a node pointer and accepts a string. I then in this function said, let's create a new node pointer and call new node, which is our struct. I didn't have this line in it at initially. Okay, so I just had two things in it, the string and the node pointer. And then I assigned the string member to s, which was passed to the new node function. And then I set the next pointer equal to zero, and I return the pointer. Now there's nothing wrong with this code, uh, but then I thought, wait a minute, I think I can do better than that. And so the better solution to that is just to declare a constructor function, right, which is the only type of function we can declare in a struct. And uh, essentially, it's a node constructor, and it accepts a string and a node pointer. Okay. Notice, I've also put it in the comments, notice I don't need variable names uh, in the constructor declaration here. So now comes the constructor implementation down here on line 21. And this is the part I really love. This is the part that makes me smile. Yeah, OK, so we've got the string s as the first argument. But then my node pointer, I have a default argument of 0. That's really nice because you're going to see later on in this example that, in fact, I don't have to specify the second argument and my next pointer becomes 0, even if I omit it. That's really nice because I always want it to be 0 by default. So essentially, just by creating this constructor function here and this implementation here from lane 21 to 23, I now don't need this new node function. I, so I got rid of it. Okay. So let's go through it. Here's my walk function. Here's one way of doing walk. I, um, I said, let's print out the, the string member. And then I said, you know, if the node, if the pointer equals zero, so we're passing a pointer to this thing, return. Now this is going to seg fault, obviously, because what if the first pointer, what if the linked list has nothing in it? Well, then we're going to dereference a null pointer and it's going to seg fault and crash. So that's not great. Um, also, here there's the concept of going if nd, nd is just a node pointer, okay? But if nd next is not equal to zero, then recursively call walk. I want to make something clear. I have to kind of go back to my code here, and I have to show you that there's two, oh, I'm having trouble here. Hold on. So there's two kind of um, ways of thinking about this. So if you have a root pointer and it points to a linked list, 
And obviously, the last one's going to point to 0. Now, yes, we're traversing down this linked list. Every time we get to uh, another node, we're going to print out the, the data or the, the string that's in there, right? And then when we get to this one here, which is kind of like the last node, my code here says if the next pointer is not equal to 0, well, this is the next pointer, right? The next pointer in this case does equal 0. So, so now I'm not going to go recursively into, into the next one, which would be the null pointer. However, I would say that even though this works, I don't like it as much as this solution here. So this solution I find more elegant. And what's the difference? The difference here is that we're going to make one extra function call. So this, this here, the last actual node, will not be the last time we do a recursive call. In fact, we're going to recursively call again, and we're going to get to this, the, the null pointer. And you might say, OK, well, isn't that a negative? No, because look at how nice the code looks. Because now we say, if nd equals 0, and that is true here at the end when we get to the null pointer, then return. So we get here, we recognize that nd, which is the pointer passed to the function, is 0, and we simply return. So we're not even going to go into trying to dereference anything, which is really good. But that means now when we go back, um, we're going to Well, actually, all of them are going to return at this point because they will all have finished. Because we're printing first. Okay, We're not recursing first. We're printing first. So in other words, what happens here is we get to this one. And the pointer nd here, the root, the root uh, pointer, is not 0. So therefore, we print the data. Let's say this is a, b, c. So we'd print a. Then we call recurse again. Now we're here. Then we print B, and then recurse again. And then we print C, and then we recurse again. And the last time, uh, the, the pointer is equal to 0, so we return. And after we return, uh, we're done, because Notice all of the walks are going to return, right? And what comes after that? Nothing. So that means n no code's going to be executed. We're simply going to return back up the stack. Okay? So that means we're actually doing something first before recursing. Okay? So that's why the order of what things get printed out is the proper order that's in the linked list. We're not printing them out backwards. OK? Just think for a minute. We're going to come to this later. What would happen if we reversed these two lines here, 36 and 37? If we recurse first and then print, right? That's a really interesting situation. Because in that situation, we would recurse, print nothing. The first thing we do in the function would be recurse. Then we'd recurse again, recurse again, recurse again. And then we'd hit return. But you see, in that case, the C out would be after the recursive call. So now we'd start printing out the data going backwards. So we'd print out C, B, A. You see? So the order of lines 36 and 37 is super important in this case. OK, so you know, if I, if I run this program now, it's going to run. 
and we can see the output. I haven't even shown you int main yet, but uh, oh, actually, let, probably a good idea to do that. Let me actually clear the, the screen here so that we can see where the beginning is. And so if I run this, um, here we start inserting things, um, but we, we're not even calling walk yet. Okay, so here we're calling walk B, and here we're calling, we, we insert B first, and then we insert D, and then we call walk. And so B comes first, D comes second. Okay, now that makes sense because B comes before D, but we haven't even looked at insert yet. So at this point, I would just say, you'll have to trust me. And we, I mean, I could flip those two lines. It's not tough. If I deleted this line and pasted it after the walk, and now if I run it, you'll notice that, uh, so okay, so for this one, it's not gonna make much of a difference. But now, notice, I'm going to print D first and then B. So the order now is backwards. So, but that's really not what I wanted to do. I want them to be printing in the proper order. Okay, so let's move on. Next function is length. Now, when I first thought about coding this, I said, hmm, how am I going to be able to ch modify an, an integer variable? And I don't want to use global, right? So I thought, okay, well, I'll, maybe I'll just pass a second argument into the function and I'll pass it by reference. So that way, whenever I modify it, if I have to increment a count variable, every time I go into this function, I'm going to increment the count. Okay. Now the sucky thing about this is, is that now I also have to uh, create a count variable before I call length. That's, that's not great. Uh, but just in general, this solution, even though it may work, and it does, I have tested this, it's not optimal. It's not great. Take a look at this function. This is a really nice way of counting the length of a linked list. So in this situation, what we're doing is we're saying, listen, if nd equals 0, return 0. So there's a value we're returning. So notice length returns an int here. Notice before up here, it returned void because the counting variable was passed in by reference. Forget that much, much better here. We're returning a value, okay? Once again, we're going to the very last one. Not just the very last node, but we're going one past that to the pointer that points to nothing. And when we get there, we return zero, okay? So look at how cool this is. So if I draw this again, uh, let me just start over with the drawing. And here's my root pointer. Okay, and here is let's say let's say, let's just put in three nodes. Good enough. Okay. So watch what happens here. So if I move this over just slightly, here's my solution. If nd equals zero, return zero. Well, if it's not zero, what do we do? We return one plus the length of nd next. Well, this, this guy here, is not zero. So we're gonna now, so now we're gonna call one plus, now we're gonna call length of all this, right? So we're, now this pointer, okay? Well, what's that? Well, this is now 1 plus the length of this guy. Now this is 1 plus the length of this guy. Okay, now ready? Here we go. Now we get to the end. Now we're at the 0. And now here's our base case for the recursion. And we return 0. So now nd is equal to 0. 
this is now nd, and it is equal to 0. So we return 0. So this gets now replaced with a 0. So what's 1 plus 0? That's 1. Okay. Now that gets filled into there. Now this is 1 plus 1. That's 2, and it gets filled into there. This is now we're going back up the stack. The recursive calls are returning. And so finally, 1 plus 2 is 3. And that gets returned to the original call to length. And notice each time we are returning an integer. And that's exactly what length is supposed to return. So that's a, that's a really nice way of calculating the length. And that's, if you can wrap your head around this, then I think you, 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 you'll start really having an understand for how this recursion with linked lists is working. All right, let's move on to the next one. The next function, uh, excuse the pun, next. Um, so this function is called push front. So what's this supposed to do? Well, let's go back to the picture again, because this is really a, a great way of explaining things. Actually, you know, let's take a pause moment here. Let's pause for a minute. Um, before I continue describing what these functions are doing and how they're working, let's scroll down here to int main, and let's take a look at how we're starting things off. So let's go all the way down. OK, so here's int main. Ready? So I keep referring to this thing called root. Well, there it is on line 241. I have here a. Um, a string, uh, a C string array, okay, constant character pointer array, which is a C, which are C strings. But here, I have a node pointer that's called root, and initially I set it equal to zero. Okay, now when I call these functions, let's say for example walk, I'm passing the root pointer. Okay, what is root? It's a node pointer. Okay, so if we go back up all the way to the top, let's say we go to walk. All my function variables, I'm using this variable called nd. It just stands for node, but essentially it's a node pointer, because it's because I'm just I'm declaring it here as a node pointer. So each one of these functions is accepting a node pointer. Now understand that it's going to be the root pointer from int main. Okay, so it just to kind of give you a um, uh, an idea of what I'm doing in the main part of this program. I'm going into a loop and I'm, uh, well, I was pushing back stuff here, but I'm inserting things from that array. So I'm inserting B and then I'm inserting D and then A, E, F, C. Now, you'll notice that when we get to the insert um, method, or insert function that it's actually a little bit it's doing a little bit more than insert there is some kind of a, a, a requirement as to how it's inserting things and in fact you're, you're probably guessing that it's inserting things alphabetically and you're right and it's actually really easy to do so let's let's take a look let's continue on with our um, description of the functions. OK, so here is push front. And let's describe um, what push front is doing. So if you have a root pointer, and let's make this one even simpler. Let's just have it be two nodes. And push front is basically it doesn't matter what's in here. This could be E and H. If we wanted to push a node with string A, for example, into the front of this, we would have to now have this root pointer. Now remember, this is actually, the, our root pointer contains uh, a memory address, right? Well, we'd have to kind of get rid of this thing. We'd have to have 
a new root pointer pointing to a new node that we just created that had some string, say A. And now this thing would have to point to the rest of the structure. Right? So that's push front. Right? You're pushing something into the beginning of the linked list. Well, OK, so this is an issue here. Why is this an issue? Because, let's, first of all, let's come over here and take a look at the code here. If we don't pass the pointer by reference, then what are we actually doing? We're copying the memory location, right? So we would copy it, and now, so let, let me put it to you this way, okay? So if we, if we copy that memory location, would the root pointer change in int main? Answer is no. See, if you make a copy of a variable and you modify the variable that you copied, you're not going to be modifying the original. So the original root pointer in int main is not going to be modified. That means it's still going to be pointing to the second element, this one. So the only way to do this, well, one way actually to do this is to pass by reference. If you pass by reference, now we're modifying the root pointer. And we must, because we're putting in a new node here. So now how do you do this? OK, well, you can either do it the old way, in which we would call the new node function that we made, or that we decided not to use, and then um, set the next pointer of that newly created node to our original root pointer. Okay, So in other words, we would like this this now when when we passing it in right this is this is because this is like nd right so now what we want to do so nd is the is the root pointer so now when we when we're here we would say well we created this new node but it's next okay well here i'm going it's next one is nd right and so in essentially now i'm saying this guy points to the, the E, which was our original uh, root pointer. But now we have to re-specify the root pointer, which is ND, to the newly created pointer. And I've done this here twice. Notice, well, not twice, but I've done it one way here using the new node function. And then here is the alternate uh, solution using the constructor that we made. At the beginning of the video, I described the constructor. This I like much, much better because in here, I can specify assigning the string and the next pointer all in the initialization of the new node. That's really nice. So now, I don't need, I don't need to, well, I don't need to pass s because I'm already passing it here. And I, I don't need to do this either because that is done here. So it's like one less line. I do need to reassign to make nd equal to nwn, which is the new pointer that was just created. And essentially, that is changing the pointer uh, in int main that is root to point to the beginning of a. So notice this is not recursive. OK? Um, now, having said that, let's pause here for a minute and think to ourselves, uh, is there a way to use push front without passing by reference? Because I will say this, you know, let's just remember one thing here. Passing by reference is 
only a C++ feature. We can't pass by reference in C. So we could change this function completely. And here's my alternate push front, and it doesn't use by reference. However, notice here, in the original push front I have, it returns nothing. It returns void. But here, it returns a node pointer. So usage, I mean, the usage of this one is just push front, root, and some string. So in int main, my root pointer to my linked list, right? OK, fine, that gets passed here by reference, and bill is the string. That's fine. But notice with this one, I can't use it that way. I have to actually use it this way, where I'm actually, this push front function is returning the new root pointer, and I'm returning nwn here. OK? So there's a slight difference in, the, in its usage, but I am getting away by not, not passing by reference. Later on, uh, in the examples below, we'll see that there is one other method to do this. OK, so let's continue. You know, actually, I got to say something. Uh, someone pointed out to me, hey, you know what? Instead of doing these two lines on separate lines, why can't you just do them in one line here? Why can't you just say nd equals new node s comma nd? Because after all, um, new node is going to return a pointer, right? Whenever you have new and then whatever data type, it's going to return a pointer to that data type. Okay, you're you're making a request to the operating system to say allocate some memory that can that can store a node and return that memory address to me. And that memory address then gets assigned to, well in this case, nd. Here in the lines below, I actually created a new node pointer with some variable name, and then I simply assign that variable name to nd. Well, you know what? Hey, why create an extra line of code when you can do it? It's actually, in, in fact, in my opinion, I think line 68 is more readable because now I know nd refers to the root pointer from the function call up here, right? And now you're simply going, creating a new node, assigning it to that, right? So the root pointer is changing, once again, because it's passed by reference. And to boot, the beautiful part about this is, is that your old nd, which isn't overwritten yet, is going to be assigned to the next pointer of that new node. Wonderful. One line of code. Fabulous. We don't even need this anymore. Let's get rid of it. I mean, we'll just comment it out here. But uh, I love it. One line of code for push front. Beautiful. Um, and I can, I can fix that here too, right? Um, but in this, in this particular case, I could just get rid of this because I'm returning this stuff, right? And I could just go like this. Return and then go, uh, I'm not even sure if I actually, yeah, there you go. Return new node and now I can just get rid of this. There you go. Because in this case, this is a different usage, right? I'm actually going to be having to, in my int main function, I'm going to have to assign this push front to my root pointer, unlike up here, which I did not. Uh, you can see the usage is on line 61. So let's move on. What about pop front? Well. Let's save this first. OK, so pop front is obvious, right? We want to simply take out the first guy. So in this case, let's say if we, if we ran pop front here, we would want to delete this guy. So now in this particular situation, we have to be careful a little bit 
Once again, we are going to change the root pointer, so we are passing by reference again. However, um, if our root, if you know, um, what if our, what if our linked list actually contains nothing? Well, then we obviously we can't take something away from nothing. So we have to have an if statement here and say if nd is not equal to zero, then go ahead and create a temporary node pointer here. Assign that to the next pointer of nd, right? So here would be our next pointer. Assign a temporary variable to this thing so that this is pointing to the same place. And then now nd is our uh, referencing our root pointer. Delete that. Okay, so now we don't own this memory anymore. And we have to store the nd next before we delete it because then we get into a big trouble, right? Because we've just, we've just deleted what we still need. So obviously we'd have to store the temp before deleting nd. And then afterwards, we would simply assign nd uh, to the temp so that nd now points to the second element. Uh, and that's, of course, the root pointer from int main. And that's how you would uh, get rid of the first guy. So um, somebody in my class also asked, hey, listen, you know, once again, ampersand is uh, C++ passing by reference. How would you do this in C? Well, the answer to that is think about how you would pass by reference in C you'd have to use pointers. So let's, we're going to have to kind of clear this a little bit. And I have to show you a simple example here. Now, I should have actually perhaps you know, explained this earlier. But for example, if we had a variable int x, and you know it was equal to 2 or something like this in, in a regular simple code, and we wanted to have a function that would change x. And so let's say that function is foo. And now, if we called the function foo here, now passing by reference, you don't have to actually change the function call. You could just send x to it. And then here you would go int, and you'd put ampersand x. And if you changed x inside foo, then it would change the, the variable x in your main scope. Okay, so let's just say this is int main. Okay, well, that you can do the same thing in C, but now instead, you can actually go like this. You can pass the address of x, and now instead of foo accepting an integer, you can say foo accepts an integer pointer, xp. Now, if I change xp, by dereferencing xp and setting it equal to 3. Of course, now if I you know, printed x out, I'm going to get I'm going to get the 3, right? Because th this is essentially how to pass by reference in C. You pass the address, you create a pointer to the object, and then when you refer to the object you dereference it. Well, guess what? You can do the exact same thing in this case. However, in this case, we're not passing an integer. We're passing a node pointer. But because it's a node pointer, now we're going to have to pass a node pointer pointer. It's the exact same situation as before. You see, in this situation, the data that we're passing by reference is an integer. In our program, the data that we're passing by reference is a node pointer. So notice here, we had to use this as an integer pointer. So we just add a star. Well, now here, guess what? Now it has to be a pointer pointer. 
and there it is. And then every time we refer to that node pointer pointer, we have to dereference it. So the usage is slightly different. Here, when you pass by reference, you can just specify the variable root. Whereas, here, in this usage, we'd have to pass the address of root. And, in addition, every time we refer to the variable, we'd have to dereference it here, and here, and here, and here. But the code is the same, right? It's just that whenever I refer to the variable, I have to dereference it. And by the way, um, I'm being careful here, so I'm putting brackets because I got to dereference it first. Then I dereference it again to get to the uh, next member. Okay, so this would work too, but you know what? Hey, it's okay, uh, just for fun, and then. Um, we change the usage here too. In this case, we actually changed it and we made it return something. So in this case, we made it return the temporary variable instead of um, either you know passing the address or by pa passing by reference. We're changing the usage. So different ways to do the same thing, but it's up to you which one you want to use in your implementation. Like I said, the reason why I'm showing these is that if you're not using C++, if, you, if you're relegated to only using C, I think it's nice to be able to know how to do it in both languages. Although, do understand that C++ you know, uh, has C in it. So anything you can do in C, you can do in C++, but not the other way around. Okay, so that's pop front. That's, that takes out the first guy. Okay? Um, let's move on. So here, the next one is pushback. Now, uh, the, here was my first Im implementation of this. Again, I'm using the new node function that I created. And then look at this. Oh my goodness, ugly, ugly. I'm going into a while loop. I'm, recur I'm like basically hopping down uh, the linked list using a while loop instead of doing it recursively. Ta ta ta, don't do that, okay? Here's my better pushback. Um, yes, the, the, the node pointer has to be by reference. And by the way, the reason why the, the, the node pointer has to be re by reference is for this situation, okay? So, Let's clear this for a minute and listen to this. Let's say you had a root pointer and let's say you had it point to that it, the linked list basically contained something in it already. Now, if you wanted to go push back and you wanted to push back on another letter, well, then it would look like this. You have your original B and now let's say you want to push in like an F or something. Okay, so there, we've added an F onto the end of the linked list. That would be a pushback. But notice, in this situation, this pointer never changed. This pointer is pointing to the B node. And here, again, after the pushback, this pointer is still pointing to the B node. So you might be under the impression, haha, for pushback, we don't need to pass by reference. But you'd be wrong. And the reason why you're wrong is because what if our original root pointer points to null? Now you do have to change the original root pointer because now after the pushback, your root pointer is going to point to the new, newly created node that's been pushed back. And so therefore, this address is going to change. It's no longer zero. So, therefore, we're gonna put we're gonna pass ND by reference. Okay, that's the reason for that. Um, now, how do we do this? Well, basically, all you do is th this is recursive. Okay, you just check. Does ND equal zero? So in this situation. Um, 
Well, let's go back to up here. No, it's not 0. So if it's not, what's, what do we do? We skip the if statement and we recurse. We say push back onto the next guy, onto this guy. Push back. Now, now we're, we're on the recursive call. Now nd is equal to, be, equal to 0. And if it is, create a new node with string s. And by the way, look at this. Look at how beautiful this is. The second argument is missing. Therefore, it will automatically be 0 because we set our default argument in the struct constructor to be 0. Bam! Look at how nice that is. And then we return. OK? So this is nice because it'll work for this. It'll work for a situation where we already have things in the linked list. It'll recurse down. And it'll also work for the situation where we have nothing in the linked list because then the if statement will be true right off the bat. And we'll just simply create the new node and return. Then it's not really recursive. But it has to be if we have things in there. Right? There's pushback. Let's move on. OK, so there is one issue that I'd like to address. And that is uh, like the efficiency of this pushback in terms of memory. No, let's just think about the situation where, let's say we have a million things in this linked list. I mean, that's a pretty big linked list, but let's just say we did. Then each time we call pushback, notice that we are passing s, and in C++ by default, we pass by copying. So we're copying the string however many times for each function call. There, however many times we have things in the, in the linked list. So if there's a million nodes in the linked list, it means we're copying the string for every function call a million times. Now that's not great, especially if the string is big. One way to get around that, perhaps, would be to pass the string by reference. And then you're only passing 8 bytes in a 64-bit operating system. Now, if I do that, however, if I put an ampersand here, notice what's going to happen here is that this is now not going to compile. You might think, well, why not? Shouldn't it be the same? Well, there is one limitation when you do this. Watch this. So I do, it, it does fail. And the reason why it fails is because in int main, I'm actually doing um, pushback. Uh, let's see where. In a bunch of places. But like, like right here, I'm doing pushback. And this is not a variable. It's a string literal. So I can't pass this by reference. So I'd have to use a variable here instead of using uh, a string literal. Okay, So I mean, that's not a huge deal. But I mean, if your strings were big, it's probably a better idea to pass by reference because that's going to take up more memory down the stack as we do function after function after function call. Because each time we're making a copy of the, of the data that we eventually I mean, it's, it's, it'll, all get, it'll all get freed eventually once, the, once we go back up the stack. But still, um, something to consider. OK? So we can't do that right now. So we'll just, I'd have to change int main to make all my pushbacks variables. So we'll leave that uh, by copy right now. Now we have pop back, which is taking out the last guy at the end. And here, we would have to, if I draw a picture of this one, so it, let's say pop back, we want to take out that guy. Well, you, in this case, you can't, if you've gone to here, you've gone too far. There's no way for us to go back. So now we do have to check the next, um, dereference the next pointer. And if that is equal to 0, as it is in this case, then we have to delete nd, delete that guy out. 
And then, this is important, we have to set nd equal to 0. Why? Because nd is this guy. And by deleting this and by setting this pointer equal to 0, now b is going to point to 0. And so we'll go from essentially this situation to this situation. Okay? So now b has to point to 0. And that line 174 is important because if we didn't put that, then our next pointer there would not be 0. Okay? Once again, in order for that to happen as well, pop back has to be passed by reference because we are changing the root pointer there for um, this guy, right? Okay, and then we return, and if it's not equal to zero, well, we have to go down to the very end, or to the last node before we can do that, okay? So that's pop back, and here comes insert. Now, insert's actually really, really cool. Um, I originally wrote it this way, and then I discovered something that's called short circuit evaluation in C++. Boy, oh boy. Talk about utilizing things to the nth degree of efficiency. Um, this is so cool. So I learned that, in fact, it was from this example that I learned that. When you have a compound if statement, let, let's come over here, let's clear this out and let's maybe start again. When you have a compound if statement, you have if nd equals 0 or s is less than or equal to uh, nd dereference the string. Well, what happens here? you're trying to insert something, right? So you could have the situation where your root pointer is pointing to nothing. Now if you insert a node with this situation, where does it go? Well this is the same as push back or push front. There's no difference, right? But executing this is going to cause your program to fail. Why? Because when you do nd, D, this arrow pointer is a dereference, right? What is it like? It's like saying this. Okay? Uh-oh. If nd, now if root points to zero and we dereference the root, this is going to give us a segmentation fault. Fortunately, that doesn't happen. Why? Well, we don't get the segmentation fault because of the way this short circuit evaluation works. If this first part of the OR compound IF statement, if this first part is true, then we will then C++ won't check the second part. Because you see, it's because it's an OR, right? So if we look back to here, because this is an OR, if this is true, then why do, you, why do you even need to look at this? You don't. Since it's an OR, if the first part is true, then the second part won't even be evaluated. Why waste time? You know it's going to be true anyways. It's an OR. And that's why the short circuit works, because if if nd is equal to 0, obviously this is going to cause a seg fault, but it won't get to here. And that's why the order of this compound if statement matters. We have to put the if nd equals 0 first. So, okay, so let's move on now. And so what do we do? Well, now we've already written this code. Why write it again? It's push front, right? And so and and the nice thing about push front is be, it works because it's by reference so even if it's into the middle right like if we're putting something into the middle let's go back to our my paint and let's start a new picture here 
if we go root and we let's say we wanted to um, you know okay so let's say this is a b uh, d well we're trying to insert c well okay so is c less than a uh, no is c less than b no is c less than d yes it is so it's going in there so now we call push front on this pointer here okay now remember how push front works it's by reference so whatever is pointing to that location now points to the first one so it would be B and then C and then D so it, it, it's fantastic it does exactly what we want it to it's it's recursive until it finds the location that it wants to put it into okay um, yeah it'll just keep going until and by the way listen if it if it gets to the end that's fine too that means it's just gonna go push front uh, onto the zero onto the null pointer and that's perfect as well okay uh, so now the last function of our example here today is what the function I call lfree, which is free the link list. So this is an important one, and I have the solution that I like here. And the reason why this is important, and once again I alluded to this in the walk function at the beginning of this lesson, and that is, if you'll notice, my recursive call comes first before anything else. Well, obviously, if there's nothing in ND, and also this is the base case too, then we can just return. There's nothing to clean up. But also, if we're at the end, then we can return. So how does this work? Well, once again, we'll, we'll start over, and we'll say, OK, so here's our root pointer. And we have to clean up let's say these three things. So what will happen is it'll say, okay, well, is this zero? No, it's not zero. Is this zero? No, no, yes. So at this point it returns. Okay, so we go back here. And, and, and notice here, so we're skipping down, right? So the first thing we do in the function is we, we don't do anything first. The first thing we do is we recurse. So we recurse down, we recurse down, and we recurse down. Then, at this point, once we get to zero, we return back. And now we're going to go back up the stack of our recursive calls. So at this point, the next line after that is delete nd. Just ignore the C out for a minute. And now we'll delete nd. And by the way, this is now nd, so we delete this pointer. So this pointer gets taken out. We delete it and set it equal to zero. You see, and now this pointer, since it's that 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 gets now set to zero. So now our our link list, obviously, if I make it look a little neater, it just looks like this. Ta-da! And then, okay. So what happens after we do that? Well, the function ends, and then we now return. The function returns automatically because the function's finished. So now we get to this node. And now again, we call delete on nd. And this is here's nd. We set it, we delete it, and now we set it to zero. See? Then the recursive call finishes and we go back to the first one. And then we delete it and we set the root pointer now to zero. And so essentially, once it's over with, we've deleted them in reverse order. We deleted the last one first, and then the second last, and then the first one. That's super important, because you have to delete them from the end. Because if you, if you delete the first one in the linked list first, then you have no way of deleting the rest of the stuff in the linked list, and you've just created yourself a huge mess of a memory leak. Okay. 
So uh, I hope that this example was understandable and I tried to do my best job of explaining uh, a concept that I find many, many people actually, you know, in high school and university have, uh, college, have difficulty understanding linked lists. Hopefully this will make it a little bit more uh, understandable. See you next time.